seen you believe that anything can talk, my good friend, David Pendleton. guys. Well, thank you very much. You know, Rick and uh, John were talking about their experiences traveling, and uh, I want to tell you a story. This is one of my favorite stories about traveling on the road myself. Now, Linda is my wife, and you'll see her around here tonight as well. And Linda and I, before we had children of our own, would travel around the country, and of course, I would do my ventriloquist act. And a lot of times, we found ourselves staying with host families. Now, this is a lot of fun to do because I get to meet people along the way as I go, and I really enjoy doing that. And one evening, we were staying with a host family. The host showed us up to the master bedroom, and they said, Now, David, this is where you and Linda will be sleeping tonight. And I said, Oh, you really don't have to do that. I mean, you know, it's, it's, it's your bedroom here. You don't need to put us there. And they said, No, 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 you're our guest. We'd like you to stay here in the master bedroom. And, uh, you know, we, you'll have more privacy that way, your own bathroom. And I said, Well, I thank you. That's very nice. But the question is, where will the two of you be sleeping? And they said, well, the two of us actually are going to be on the sleeper sofa. And I said, oh, you really don't have to do that. They said, no, no, we, we insist. And so Linda and I were sound asleep that night in the master bedroom, covers kind of pulled up over our heads, when we heard the pitter-patter of little feet <laughs> walking into the master bedroom there. I heard a little voice coming out of the darkness saying, Mommy! Mommy! I thought, oh, this is great. Child's calling out for mommy. I'll just let Linda handle this. <laughs> <laughs> so Linda peeked her head out from under the covers, and she said, Honey, your mommy is sleeping on the sleeper sofa tonight. And then there was a long pause. <laughs> and out of the darkness, I heard, Dad! <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Of course, I shot up, you know, and, oh, Dad is down there, too. That's how that, that's how that works. <clears throat> Kids are sweet, you know. They say, they, you know, they're just innocent. We have some friends who have a little girl, sweet little girl. And she, she has a wonderful little voice. She's three years old, just has that little three-year-old voice. And they took their little girl while she loves to talk. And, uh, and so they took her to the pediatrician for your typical wellness checkup. And the pediatrician had out the stethoscope and was holding it up to her chest. But Lauren just kept talking. She just kept chattering away. So finally, the pediatrician said, Okay, now listen, honey, you need to be very quiet right now. I'm listening to see if Barney is in there. And her eyes got really big. She said, Jesus is in my heart. Isn't that great? Barney's on my underpants. Looks like I'm in the wrong spot. There we go. A lot of people ask me as a ventriloquist if I ever do any practical jokes. And people have different ideas for practical jokes that a ventriloquist might do. Um, they, you know, ask me to come over to their house and throw my voice under someone's bed or something like that. And, and there, there are actually different practical jokes that I like to do as a ventriloquist. When I was in school, I would talk in class. And, of course, I never got caught. And... Um, <laughs> There's real advantages to being a ventriloquist. And so uh, uh, there is a practical joke that, that involves whatever I happen to have handy, like a blanket or a pillow or a jacket. Oh, perfect. A ja oh, thank you very much. A jacket. That's great. Appreciate that. I was uh, doing a show a few years ago on a college campus, and when I showed up on campus, I discovered that I was coming down with a cold. Now, when a ventriloquist has a cold, that's big trouble, of course. That means the whole act will have a cold. So I thought I should do something about that. And I decided to go over to the health center on campus. Now, college campus health centers are usually pretty scary places to go. They generally misdiagnose you there. They, re they really have no idea what you have. They, they just say you have mono. That kind of covers, <laughs> covers everything. You know. And they treat you exactly the same no matter what you have. They give you a little bottle of Motrin and a bottle of cough syrup about that big. doesn't matter what you have, you know. 
So I was expecting that, and I walked in, and I saw the receptionist. Now, she hadn't seen me come in, so I thought I'd kind of get warmed up for the show that night. And I had a jacket with me, very similar to this one. It had a nice soft lining like this. And I took the jacket. I was around the corner. She was behind the glass window. And I kind of balled the jacket up a little bit to give it some shape. It held onto it so that it looked something like, like this. There you go. Let's get up here. There we go. Very nice. And then I walked over, of course, in front of the receptionist, and she looked over at me and kind of smiled. You know, here's a guy with a baby. You know, and of course, I smiled back and you know, kind of rocked a little bit. <laughs> and, and as babies will often do, this baby got a little upset, and with the help of ventriloquism, of course, it sounded something like this. So what do you do with a baby that's crying? Now, I've watched mothers with babies, and I know one of the things that a mother will do when the baby cries is kind of bounce the baby up and down. I've watched mothers do that. I don't know why you do that. I think it just makes the baby get confused or something. I don't know what, I don't know what the theory is behind that, but it seems to work. So I thought I'd try it. Well, that didn't work very well, obviously. So I thought, okay, maybe if I just kind of pat the baby on the back. <laughs> I looked over at the receptionist. She wasn't smiling as much, I noticed. So I thought, okay, I'll just take a pacifier, you know, put it in the baby's mouth. I've seen mothers do that too, right? The little pacifier, you know. I just happen to have a little pacifier with me. Just such an occasion. Here we go. <laughs> Began to talk to the baby. Gonna be quiet? Please be quiet. Gonna be quiet? All right. Okay, well, obviously I'm embellishing the story a little bit, but this part is true. The receptionist looked over and she said, the doctor will see you now. So as I walked by her little window there. <laughs> well. <laughs> well. <clears throat> yeah, the receptionist had a heart attack is what happened. <clears throat> they came out and they gave her a little bottle of Motrin and a bottle of cough syrup. You know, kind of, I don't know. Here you go. Thanks for your jacket. Okay. Well, tonight we're going to make you believe that anything can talk. Now, virtually anything can talk under the right circumstances. First of all, what we need is a thing. Because without a thing, we would have nothing. That's right. And the phrase, nothing can talk, is not only uninteresting, it's inaccurate. Okay. It's true. Secondly, what we need is to listen. It makes no sense to talk when there's nobody listening. Most things in the world figured this out a long time ago, and that's why they no longer speak. <laughs> it's true. When was the last time you really listened to your toaster? <laughs> uh-huh. And that's why it rarely speaks. <laughs> okay? You know, we've got a lot of teenagers here tonight. Student Impact students are here. Where are the Student Impact students? Yeah! Woo! Oh, yeah. And I know that a lot of you brought your, your parents along, specifically your mothers. Some of you might have. Are there, are there mothers of teenagers here tonight? Any mothers of teenagers? Yes. Let's have mothers of teenagers. Mothers of teenagers. Let's have all mothers stand up. Just all mothers. Go ahead. Mothers, stand up. There you go. I want to see the mothers. There you go. See? Fantastic. Very good. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Stay, stay, stay standing. Because you see, there's something I need to say about this. You see, some people continue to talk even when nobody ever listens. <laughs> see, these people have important things to communicate. These people are not toasters, okay? <laughs> Learn to listen. Thank you, mothers. You can sit down now, okay? 
All right, the third thing we need in order for anything to speak is imagination. Suspend your sensibilities for a little while, it doesn't hurt. Oh, and you'll also need a ventriloquist. <laughs> Unfortunately, those are a dime a dozen and, you know, readily available in discount stores and unemployment offices everywhere. So, um, so we have a ventriloquist, uh, we, have, we, we, we have imagination, and we're prepared to listen, right? Okay, so the only thing that we need is a thing. A thing. <laughs> okay, well, I... A, okay, here we go. We have a suitcase right here. Would you like to see a suitcase talk? Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right, Mr. Suitcase, these good people are listening. What have you got to say? <laughs> All right, maybe this will help if I open this up. There we go. Okay. What have you got to say? What the heck are you doing? <laughs> there you go, talking suitcase. <laughs> actually, it's not. Would you uh, just cut out the nonsense and get me out of here? Okay, just one second. This is actually Mac inside the suitcase, and uh, let me just bring him out. How you doing, Mac? What is up? Oh, come on, Mac. Here we go. What's up? What are you doing, man? What's going on here? What's going on? Hey, man. What's up? What's up? What were you doing? Well, we were just talking to the suitcase. <laughs> you have got to be kidding me. <laughs> all right, that's ridiculous. We all know the suitcase does not talk. Says you. All right, why didn't you say anything earlier? Yeah, you try talking when your lid is locked. <laughs> well, all these years and I've never heard him speak. You never listened. All right, fine. Well, Mac, here we are. Here we are. Well, nice looking group here. Yeah, looking around here. Oh, where's that Jennifer? I heard about her. <laughs> yeah. How you doing, Jennifer? <laughs> <laughs> so you like the girls I gather? Huh? You like the girls I gather? No, man, I like the girls I gather. <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> I seen the ones you get. Come on now, cut it out. <laughs> well, we got a nice looking group right down here in the front row. Here we go. There's a nice group here. How you doing, sir? You right down there with that checkered shirt on. What's your name, sir? Bill. What is it? Bill. Bill? Bill. Bill. It's hard to say without moving your mouth. <laughs> That's right. Bill. What's up, Bill? <laughs> Bill, 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 Bill. How about if I just call you William? Is that all right? <sighs> How you doing, Bill? Fine. Fine. Glad to hear it. Glad you're here tonight. Where are you from, Bill? Indiana. I'm sorry? Indiana. No, I heard you. I'm just sorry. I just... just, just, just <laughs> right. Yeah. Glad you came tonight, Bill. What do you do, Bill? School teacher. School teacher? Do you teach right here at this school? Oh, no. No. Uh, I, 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 no. Well, where do you teach? Well, in Indianapolis. In Indianapolis. Retired. Retired. Well, great. <laughs> I had nothing funny to say about that. <laughs> <laughs> That's your fault. <laughs> oh, come on, Judge. Come on, Judge. Hey, Bill, you know what? what? You're talking to a piece of wood. Oh, come on. <laughs> yeah, is right? You gotta wonder about him. <laughs> well, Mac, we're here tonight for all the folks to demonstrate a little bit of my ability as a ventriloquist. As you know, I am a ventriloquist. <laughs> no. <laughs> You're a ventriloquist, huh? No, no, the word is ventriloquist. That's what I said, ventriloquist. <laughs> it's ventriloquist. Ventriloquist. All right, sound it out. Huh? Sound it out like this. Ven. Ven. Trill. Trill. O. O. Quist. Quist. Ventriloquist. Ventriloquist. <laughs> <laughs> All right, it's got to say a little faster. 
Van Danger Trail, August list. <laughs> there you go. Try it again. Van Danger Trail, August list. Van Danger Trail, August list. Ventriloquist. I can't help it, man. It's like it's that one word. It's hard for me to say. It's just the shiny floor, like they put in the kitchen. You know what I'm? Bill. You know what I'm talking about? You know the shiny floor in the kitchen? Yeah. You had no. You had no idea, do you? <laughs> Yeah, the wheel is turning, but the hamster's missing. Come on, you cut it off. Come on. Come on. All right, somebody knows what I'm talking about. The shiny floor in the kitchen. That's it. Say it again. Le, 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 le. Le, 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 le. Le, le, le. All right, it's linoleum. Sound it out, huh? Sound it out like this. Lan Lan, no no, Lily, um, um, Lan Lan, no no, Lily, um, um, Lan Lan, no no, Lily, um, um, Linoleum Ventriloquist. <laughs> All right. Okay. All right, Mac, I thought we'd start off by having you sing a little song, huh? Thought we'd have you sing a song. You gotta be kidding me. <laughs> You sing? I sing a little. Let me hear you. All right. <clears throat> la 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 la. Oh, singers do run it. They singers do run in my family. Yeah, they should. Oh, come on. <laughs> I do think of a fairly decent voice, pretty good range. I sing high C, I sing middle C, you sing low C. <laughs> <laughs> mm. All right, I suppose you can do better. I can. Let me hear your voice. Just sing. Oh, just like that. Oh, go ahead. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Man, you look like a geek. Come on. <laughs> no. I don't want to. Come on. I don't want to. Come on. I don't want to. <laughs> That's not picture back there. <laughs> Man, I look kind of scary. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at the wood box there. Yeah. Fragile. <laughs> Fragile, of course. <laughs> it is a wood box. Yeah, it looks like my cousin. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Turn your head around. I can't. Why not? It's stuck. It's stuck. All right. It, it happens. Just one second here. Just there. Tell me up. Lower. What? Lower. Lower? Yeah. All right. How's that? Don't say anything. Just kiss me. Oh, come on. Come on. <laughs> Stop. What's that on your neck? I don't know. It's a freckle. It's crawling. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's crawling. Wow. Okay. There we go. Uh, yeah. Y'all said? Yeah. Okay. Just sing the note. Just sing. Oh. Like All right. Uh, 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 um. Just got to clear my throat. All right. Uh, 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 um. <laughs> Mac, that's really in bad taste. I know, that's why I got rid of it. <laughs> I think I killed an ant down there. <laughs> hey, Bill, don't touch it, it's mine. Oh, come on, it's not. <laughs> Go ahead, just sing it up. All right. <clears throat> uh... <laughs> Try it again. Uh, a little higher. Uh, higher. Uh, higher. I'm nuts. <laughs> okay. Now. When you sing, your voice should sort of ring like a bell. Have a nice tone to it, kind of ring like a bell. Try it again. Uh, but ring like a bell. You know, try it again. All right. Uh, um. uh, I don't hear the bell. The bell's busted. I'm using a buzzer. <laughs> all right, let, let's just pick out a song and sing it. All right, all right. You might not know this, but I'm a songwriter, and I just rotten a song. <laughs> now that's written, not rotten. You haven't heard the song yet? <laughs> okay. I call this little ditty bigger isn't better. Just because someone is bigger than you are, Bill. 
Doesn't need her any better, so I wrote this song just for you. All right. Bigger isn't better. Uh huh. All right. It sounds like it has, like, Bill has lots of B's in it. Uh huh. It's one of the more difficult letters, <laughs> you know, for a ventriloquist. <laughs> That's the idea. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna kill you. <laughs> All right. Here we go. Here's my song. Watch his mouth. <laughs> Thanks a lot. My name is Mac, this is Jay. You'll notice he's the tall one. I may be short and misbehave. At least I'm not the dull one. Dave, I wish you'd open up your eyes. What do you mean? Don't judge nothing just by shape or size. Bigger isn't better, taller isn't braver, stronger isn't always wise. Smaller isn't necessarily the lesser, guts can come in any size. See the mighty lion sitting there and crying, bitten by a tiny flea. Man, this boy's colossal, once you know a fossil, then your life's on glad I need. I see what you mean, huh? yeah. The dinosaurs no more. Uh -huh. The dear old dodo is dead. Yeah, that's right. But right there on that floor, some ant will still be treading after Armageddon. Armageddon? It rhymes. Bigger isn't keener, larger isn't bolder, higher light below inside. When you need to lean up on a friendly shoulder, narrow's just as good as wide. Giants look so awesome, folks are scared to cross them. Nonetheless, I guarantee. Smallest Yankee Doodle, if he's in the moodle, beat the whole caboodle, using just his noodle. Bet your life I'm glad I'm me. You know what, tonight I wanted to try something out a little bit different here, and I actually need somebody to help me from out of the audience, but I need somebody that is seven years old. Do we have anybody? Okay, you right back there in the yellow and in, in black shirt. Yes, you, come on up here. You come, let's give him a hand as he comes up here. Are you seven? Thank you. All right, very nice. Here we go. Thank you, Linda. All right. You know what? Uh, just so that I can see you, I want you to stand up on this suitcase. Uh, I mean, on the, not my suitcase. That's my house. I mean, the, the, uh, the box there. How you doing? Good. Good. What's your name? Kevin. Kevin. Nice to see you, Kevin. Come on over here a little closer. You're not scared of me, are you? That's good. You ever heard of Chucky? <laughs> <laughs> But you're not scared of me, right? You know what I look like when I get scared, Kevin? Like this. Whoa! Uh -huh. Can you do that? Uh -huh. No. Can, can you wiggle your ears? No. Try it. Just try to wiggle your ears. Uh -huh. Oh, there you go. Good job. Well, see me wiggle my ears? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I can wiggle my nose, too. <laughs> All right, Kevin, right? Kevin, here's what I'm going to do tonight. Thank you for coming up to help me out. Tonight I'm going to do something that is just going to amaze you. I am going to read your mind. Just like a book, I can read your mind. Now, in Bill's case, it's more like a pamphlet, but that's another story. <laughs> Giving Bill a hard time. All right. Here's what I'm going to do. In my suitcase right down there, I have a paper bag. A what? A paper bag. Paper bag. Uh-huh. All right. Want me to get it? You would. Okay. Just one second here, Kevin. Don't drop me. I wouldn't drop you. Oh. Okay. There we go. All right. Paper bag. Uh-huh. All right. 
bath and body works. Yeah. <laughs> it was the right size. Okay, good. <laughs> now, Kevin, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to turn my head around so that I can't see. But just to make sure, David here is going to put this paper bag on my head. Then, we're going to have somebody out of the audience hand you an object. You're going to hold the object up, and I am going to tell you <laughs> what that object is without looking at it. <laughs> Kevin, do you think I can do that? Yeah. All right, say no. No, that's right. Well, this is going to be good. <laughs> okay. All right. Here we go. So first I'm going to turn my head around, all right? Here we go. Mm -hmm. Ain't that neat? <laughs> all right. Okay. Now you want me to put the bag on your head? Ah. Okay. Here we go. So I'm going to put the bag on his head. All right. Oops. Are we doing okay? Good. Now. Now, what would you like Kevin to do? Take an object. Say what? Pick an object. What? Pick an object. Oh, pick an object. He wants, he wants us to pick an object, so we just need somebody to give us an object that Kevin can hold up, but we're not going to say what it is, okay? So I need an object. Somebody, anybody down here, do you have an object? You're holding your hand up. You have an object. Okay. Well, that's a little small. Well, we'll try it. We'll see. Okay. Oh, very nice. Okay. All right. Kevin now has an object. <laughs> this is serious. <laughs> now, what do you want Kevin to do? Hold the object up high. Oh, yes. He is holding the object up high. <laughs> what else would you like Kevin to do? Concentrate on the object. Say what? Concentrate on the object. Oh, concentrate on the object. Okay. That, 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 you know what that means? It means really think about it because he's going to read your mind. Okay. <laughs> he's going to read your mind. So if you'll just concentrate on the object. <laughs> Can you tell us what the object is? I had no idea. <laughs> what is the object? It is a wadded up piece of paper. It's a wadded up piece of paper. He did it. Isn't that amazing? He figured it out. It's a... what, is, what is that? Exactly. It's, that's, I think that's one of the comment cards. <laughs> it's, it's, thanks for offering that. Uh, very nice. Yeah. So, anyway, uh, nice. Uh, nice, nice. <laughs> Wasn't that impressive how he did that? Wasn't that great? Amazing how he could just read your mind like that? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> very good. Thank you. Let's give Kevin a big hand for coming up here and helping us. Kevin, nice job. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you can sit down now, Kevin. <laughs> Thank you. All right, watch your step. There you go. You know what? Just the coming up to help us out, you can keep that comment card. Very nice. <laughs> Thank you, Kevin. Yeah, let, let, let's have, give him the hand as he goes back to his seat there. There you go. Right back to you, buddy. There you go. Nice. <clears throat> All right. Mac, I thought we could talk a little bit about you uh, tonight. I know, uh, you know, we could talk a little bit about you, where you grew up. Oh, yeah? Yeah, you grew up right around here. I did. I grew up on a farm right near here. 
in Elwood. <laughs> <They're right. laughs> Anybody here from Elwood? Oh, there you go. Huh? No, they're not. They're lying. <laughs> no, they're... <laughs> but you grew up on a farm. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, I did. I was a tree on a farm. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I did grow up on a farm. My family were farmers. Is that right? Oh, yeah. That's very impressive. Oh, yeah. What kind of a farm is it? Oh, just regular dirt. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, did you have animals on your farm? Oh, yeah. Yep, we had cows, chickens, a pig. Oh, got to tell you about this pig on our farm. The pig? Yeah. It was one special pig. A what? A special pig. <laughs> okay. <laughs> a special pig. That's right. That pig had a wooden leg. All right, the pig had a wooden leg. Uh huh. Really? Yeah. All right. Why did the pig have a wooden leg? That was one special pig. <laughs> one time, my daddy was out on his tractor and driving across the field. He got a little too close to the ditch. And so the tractor upset in the ditch. My daddy was pinned underneath that tractor. Now the pig saw the accident, ran over, burrowed a hole with his nose, pulled my daddy out from under that tractor, saved his life. That is one special pig. <laughs> We understand that it's a special pig. Why did the pig have a wooden leg? One other time. Yes. The house was on fire late at night. That pig saw the fire, made a huge commotion, started squealing. It woke us all up. We all got out of that house safely. That pig saved all of our lives. That is one special pig. <laughs> We understand that it's a special pig. Why did the pig have a wooden leg? Are you kidding? A pig that special? You don't eat them all at once. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta be kidding me. Okay, you said you had chickens on your farm. Uh huh. What kind of chickens are they? Leghorns? No, they lay eggs. <laughs> Yeah, one of my chickens didn't lay any eggs at all. Was that right? Yeah, that's right. Hey, Rich, can you give me a D, please? I had a chicken. No eggs would she lay. I had a chicken. No eggs would she lay. My mom said, honey, we're losing money. I had a chicken. No eggs would she lay. One day this rooster came into my yard and caught my chicken right off her guard. And? She's laying eggs now, just like she used her. Since that rooster came in and goosed her She's laying eggs now, just like she used her Since that rooster came in my yard I'm going to change the subject. All right. <laughs> All right, you said you had cows on your farm. Uh-huh. Yeah. How many cows? Oh, had a whole flock of cows. <laughs> no, that's herd. Yeah. Huh? Herd of cows? Yes, I heard of cows. They had a whole flock of them. <laughs> okay. No, I mean a cow herd. I don't care what a cow herd. He didn't say anything. <laughs> I'm not in that kind of a mood. What kind of a mood? A cow mood. Of course a cow mood. He's not going to bark. 
How many cows? Well, we had about 30 cows. Is that right? Yeah. Somebody came out to the farm one time, cut the tails off the seven of our cows. Cut their tails off? Uh huh. Then we had to sell those cows wholesale. And why is that? Because we can't retail them. <laughs> All right, did these cows give milk? No, you gotta take it away from them. <laughs> oh, really? One of my cows didn't give any milk at all. Is that right? Yeah. I had a moo cow. <laughs> no milk would she give. I had a moo cow. No milk would she give. My mom said, honey, we're losing money. I had a moo cow. No milk would she give. One day this rooster <laughs> came into my yard and caught my moo cow right off her guard. She's giving eggnog just like she used to since that rooster came in and goosed her. She's giving eggnog just like she used her. Since that rooster came in my yard. Did you grow any crops on your farm? Oh, well, we did. You did? Yes. We had a garden. You had a garden. I had a garden. <laughs> no vegetables would grow. I had a garden. No vegetables would grow. My mom said, honey, we're losing money. I had a garden. No vegetables would grow. One day this rooster. <laughs> Get into my yard and caught my garden right off its guard. It's growing eggplant just like it used to since that rooster came in my yard. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think they saw it coming. Yeah, I think they did too. All right, in my garden, I had a great big tree. A what? A tree. A tree. Uh huh. What kind of a tree? It's a gum tree. A what? A gum tree. A gum tree? Uh huh. Does it grow gum? No. 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 I had a gum tree. <laughs> no gum would it grow. I had a gum tree. No gum would it grow. My mom said, honey, we're losing money. I had a gum tree. No gum would it grow. One day this... Oh, you know that rooster, huh? Yeah. <laughs> rooster. Came into my yard and caught my gum tree right off its guard. <laughs> and... Think of something quick. It's your song. <laughs> it's growing chicklets. <laughs> Just like it used to. It's a rooster. In it a rooster. It's growing chicklets. Just like it used to. Well, you know, speaking of animals, I brought an animal along with us here tonight who happens to be inside the suitcase right back here. And his name is Buford. Yeah. This is Buford back here. I'm going to have the guys bring forward. I can't stand Buford. You don't like Buford? No. And why is that? Buford is a dog. Yes, Buford is a dog. I can't stand dogs. And why is that? I used to be a tree. <laughs> yeah. 
That'll dampen your spirits. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> well, Buford, here's a nice dog, so I brought him along. Here we go. Thank you very much, Linda. Oh, how are we doing, Buford? Oh, you doing all right? <laughs> 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 Makes me sick. <laughs> How you doing, Buford? <laughs> you doing well? <laughs> kind of makes you think of Bill, don't he? <laughs> don't you cut it out. <laughs> so. Now, Buford, I want you to be on your best behavior here tonight. We're doing a big show. Hey, if someone speaks to you, you say yes, ma'am, or yes, sir. You got that? <laughs> yep. <laughs> Can you say anything besides yep? Uh, yep. <laughs> <laughs> anything? Oh, uh, yes, sir. Okay. Now, isn't that better? Yep. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right, how about telling everybody what kind of a dog you are? <laughs> what kind of dog am I? I am going to throw up. <laughs> Buford, you. <clears throat> Do you have a pedigree? Huh? Do you have a pedigree? Uh, no, my master cut it off. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Do you mean your master cut off your tail? Uh, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Oh. Cut off your tail? Yep. Oh, doesn't that kind of spoil your carriage? No, but it's your stop my wagon. <laughs> yeah, see, they're a little slow, but they're getting them. <laughs> Are you a spitz? No, but I drool a little. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what was your mother? A female. <laughs> what was your father? Just another dog. <laughs> All right. You have a family tree? No, no, any old tree will do. Uh, Whoa! <laughs> okay. okay, guys, I thought we'd do a little number here. Now, this is an old classic ragtime type song. It's called Ragmop. Goes R A G G M O P P Ragmop. That Mac, you could sing the song. Uh huh. And Buford? Yep. Everything Mac sings, you repeat after him. We'll go back and forth between the two of you really fast. R A G G M O P P Ragmop. Watch the M's and the P's, those are the more, uh, well, the more difficult letters. So, you start, you repeat. <laughs> Here we go. You like that, eh? <laughs> okay. M. M. I say M O. M O. M O P. M O P. M O P P. M O P P. Mop. Mop. M O P P. Mop, 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 R. Or I say R A. Or A R A G. Or A G. R A G G R A G G Rag Rag R A G G M O P P Rag not to lay a diada 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 Rag not 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 R A G G M O P P Rag not Uh you can do the doodly yada yada next time Thank you <laughs> Try the alphabet A A I say A B A B No, wait a minute here. Now, we're a little uh, confused. You have a Buford's voice. <laughs> yep. I do. <laughs> I do. And I have your voice. Yep. Hello, Buford? Hi.
Uh, you have my voice. Yeah. I like it. But how about if you count to three, and then we'll all take our own voices back. Got it? <laughs> yep. Go ahead. One, two, three. Got it? I think so. <laughs> okay. Okay, okay. Very good. Very good. Well, Mac, actually, I need to put you back inside the suitcase. Huh? Can I put you back inside the suitcase? I hate it in there. Oh, sorry about that. It stinks in there. Can you help me out, guys? Oh, thank you. <laughs> all right, here we go. Just gonna just gonna lay in, just kind of backwards here. Yeah, be careful. Hey, Bill, I'll catch you later. All right. <laughs> yeah. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Just like this. Oh, 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 okay. Now what? What? Now what? Well, you know, um, your feet. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna put your feet up next to your ears. <laughs> you ain't got to be kidding me. <laughs> Can I hurt? Yeah, just for a second. I'm bad. Here we go. Oh, too high. Sorry. Here we go. Whoa, whoa. Man, double hernia. <laughs> okay. There we go. All right. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Well, I've got somebody else I'm bring on show you right now, and this is someone who's kind of be, uh, kind of keeps me on the straight and narrow, and she's become sort of the favorite in my act. Her name is Aunt Tilly. Let me bring her on. Yeah, here we go. <laughs> All right. Here we go. Okay. Oh my. <clears throat> How you doing, Tilly? What? <laughs> Let me fix your glasses. Oh, thank you. There we go. How's that? I'm hanging. Oh, <laughs> sorry about that. <laughs> <clears throat> Hi, how you doing, Tilly? Well, I can sit up and take nourishment. Well, that's good. <laughs> you, you feeling all right? Well, I'm all right. I had a little cough the other day, but I'm doing better now. You had a cough? Mm hmm. What'd you do for it? I went to the doctor. Okay, okay. What did the doctor do for you? He gave me a laxative. <laughs> doctor gave you a laxative for a cough? Mm hmm. Well, did it help? Oh, my, yes. Now I'm afraid to cough. <laughs> Doctor gave me a laxative and some Prozac. <laughs> a laxative and Prozac? Yeah, so I've been going to the John a lot, but I'm feeling good about it. <laughs> <laughs> you want to tell everybody how old you are? Not really. Oh, come on, tell them your age. Well, I'm 94. 94. That's right. Miss America, 1922. Is that right? Yeah, of course, back then there were a lot less Americans. <laughs> oh, that's true. Yeah, I used to have an hourglass figure. Now the sands of time have gone down a bit. Okay. Now I have the old furniture disease. The old furniture disease? Mm hmm. And what is that? My chest done dropped into my drawers. <laughs> Oh, you laugh. It's not funny. Gosh. <laughs> well, Tilly, have you ever been married? No. No. Darn it, no. no. <laughs> Hi, Bill. Oh, come on. <laughs> you know, there's a nice-looking fella behind you there, Bill. Who's that behind Bill right there? Hi, honey. What is your name, honey? Say it again. Brett. Brett? 
Nice to see it, Rhett. Are you married? Are you married? No? Well, I'm available. <laughs> How old are you, Brett? Really? Well, that'll do. <laughs> You're a nice-looking fella. You're a nice-looking fella. Oh, well, don't thank me. He said it. Oh, come on. <laughs> kind of makes you wonder, don't it? Don't you want to Brett's a little young for you anyway, Tilly. If the two of you got married, that could be fatal. <laughs> well, if he dies, he dies. Oh, come on. <laughs> yeah. You know, there was a fellow that I saw sitting right back over here. Let's see. One, two, three. Oh, my. well, there's Marth down there. Hi, Marth. Nice to see you again, honey. You, you know Marv? Oh, my, yes. He and I used to go out years ago. <laughs> Went out, like, out on a date? Oh, yeah. You run under that, don't you, honey? Oh, my, yes. He took me out on horseback. Took you out on horseback? Oh, yeah. Of course, we each had our own horse. And he took me out in the pasture. And his horse started to nuzzle up against my horse. And he looked at me and said, hey, I'd like to do that. <laughs> What'd you say? I said, go ahead, it's your horse. <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> yeah. Actually, I saw, let's see, sitting right back here. One, two, three, fourth row back, third man in. Right there. Yeah. Yes, you. Hi, honey. What is your name? Dean. Come on up here, Dean. I want to see you. Come on, honey. Come on, Dean. <laughs> Come on up here, honey. That's all right. Take your time. Of course, I don't have much time. You don't? No, I, do, I don't even buy green bananas no more. <laughs> nice to see you, Dean. Nice to see you. Yes, I can tell you're on the level. Pretty much. Yeah, you got your bubble in the middle. That's yeah. right, that's sure. right. Dean, that furniture syndrome too. Oh, I, I understand that. Hey, come on over. Just, I want you to stand right over here. Right, right, right over right, here? Yes, right there, honey. Not on the right, X. right on the X. That's right. Yes, I, I meant that. Right on the X. Okay. Right there. All right. Okay, what, why'd you bring him over here? I wanted to sing you a song. Can I sing you a song? If you'd like. All right. Now face the crowd. Okay. I'm just going to sit down right here. <laughs> okay. Okay, so you're gonna you're gonna sing. Wait, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Yeah. You're not gonna cough, are you? No. Okay. <laughs> right. On second thought, I do feel a cough coming on right now. <laughs> All right, come here, honey. <laughs> Okay, so you're gonna you're gonna sing him a song, isn't it? <clears throat> what are you doing? I'm just checking my makeup. Oh, come <laughs> on. Okay. 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 Step right over here. Right. Okay, here we go. Are you all set? <laughs> no, no, it's right, you're right. No, but I tell you, I do I have been having some episodes of silent gas. <laughs> I, when I went to see that doctor, I told him I've been having some episodes of silent gas. I did. I said, Doc, right here in your office, I had a little episode of silent gas. I said, what should I do about it? He said, first thing you ought to do is get your hearing checked. Oh, come on. I don't know what he meant by that. <laughs> okay, go ahead. All right. Can I have just a, maybe a G or something, honey? <laughs> oh, darling, I am growing old. Silver threads among the gold. Shine upon my brow today.
you, honey. Nice. Yes, that was nice. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, honey. Thank you. You can sit down. Now. Oh, thank it's you. It's all right. It's all right. Be careful now. It's all right. There you go. I did notice as you were singing to Dean that you have something rather strange looking in your ear. What? <laughs> what is this in your ear? I don't know. Right here. I don't know. Oh, my. Well, that's a suppository. In your ear? Well, at least now I know where my hearing aid is. <laughs> oh, I'm me. Sorry. All right. Okay. You know, the other day, I was at the Senior Citizen Center, and there was a gentleman there, and I said to him, I said, I'll bet I can tell you how old you are. He said, no, you can't. I said, yes, I can I'll bet you $30 I can tell you how old you are. He said, all right, you're on. And I said, well, stand up. And he stood up. And I said, take your clothes off. Oh. <laughs> well, he thought about that for a minute. But he said, well, $30 is $30. So he did. And I said, turn around in a circle. And he turned around. And I said, you're 87. And he said, how did you know that? And I said, because you told me yesterday. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I like that story. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Telly, I'm going to do something a little bit different here. I'm going to lay, lay you down just for a minute on top of the suitcase. What? I'm just going to put you down on top of the suitcase right there. Honey, I'll die. <laughs> there we go. There, just like this. How are you doing? Not good. <laughs> What's wrong? I've fallen and I can't get up. You're all right. Okay, you're fine. Right there, right there. All right. I'm going to lay her down. Actually, lay her down just like that. I put Aunt Tilly down here for a reason because I'm going to do something a little bit different tonight. I'm going to do something that a lot of comedians don't do. And I'm just, just for a couple of minutes here, I'm going to get a little bit serious because I want to use Aunt Tilly to illustrate something tonight that I hope that you will find meaningful. As a matter of fact, not only meaningful, but perhaps even life-changing if you really let it sink in, what it is that I'd like to share with you tonight. Because frankly, it was life-changing for me. You know, again, this group that sponsored the, uh, the program tonight, Student Impact, reminds me of when I was in high school myself. And uh, we had a group in our, in our high school that was kind of similar to Student Impact. They called it Lighthouse. And uh, I remember I went to a couple of those meetings uh, of that, that they had there at the school. And one day I actually got into a conversation with a friend of mine, a friend of mine named Lillian. And Lillian shared some things with me that changed my life with respect to what life is really all about. What's the meaning of life anyway? We got into one of those conversations about the meaning of life and all of those things. And what Lillian shared with me, I want to share with you tonight, but I'm going to use Aunt Tilly to illustrate what I'm talking about and hope that she'll find this meaningful. I'm going to hold Aunt Tilly up just like this. Now, I know it looks kind of sad to see her hanging there, just kind of lifeless like that. Just a moment ago, she had life, and now she's sort of hanging there, just lifeless. You see, Aunt Tilly was created... She was created to be used in my act. She was made especially for me. And Aunt Tilly was created in the image of a human being. Now, she's not really a human being, but she was made in the image of a human being. Here's what I want you to think about tonight. You and I were created as well. And you and I were created in the image of God. We're not God, but we are created in his image. Now, Aunt Tilly here has a little problem. See, she has no life, well, apart from me. And frankly, I believe that you and I have a similar problem in that we have no real spiritual life apart from a relationship with the one who created us. See, God has created us to have a relationship with him. It's the way we were made, the way we were designed. But when we are not in the relationship with him that we were created to be in, there is something that's missing in our lives. There's an emptiness that exists that nothing can fill though we try to fill that emptiness with so many things. But fortunately, God has given us a way to have a relationship with him. And that, I believe, is in his son, Jesus Christ. 
who died on the cross, taking the death penalty for sin upon himself so that when you and I place our faith and our trust in him, he's promised that he would come into our lives, forgive, forgive us, and make us the people that he's created us to be. See, the Bible puts it like this. Romans 3.23 says that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Romans 6.23 goes on to say that the wages of the penalty of sin is death or spiritual separation from God, such that there is absolutely nothing that we can do to have the relationship with God that we were created to have. But when Jesus came into the world, he took that death penalty upon himself, taking away the penalty from us if we would only receive it. Well, the question is, of course, how do we receive it? And the Bible would say that's by faith. In Ephesians 2, 8, 9, it says, For by grace you've been saved through faith, not of yourselves. It's a gift of God, not a result of works that no one should boast. Well, what does that mean, faith? Well, faith is trust, actually inviting him to take his place in our lives. Jesus said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in to him. Literally, he would come into our lives and fill our lives to make us the people that he's created us to be. So that as we place our faith and our trust in him, he literally comes to live in us and through us, allowing us to fulfill the very purpose for which we were designed. That our lives would be in harmony, would be in sync with his will. That he would literally live in us. And we would have a relationship with him. The relationship with him that we were created to have. You know, I made that decision when I was in high school. The age of, you know, many of the students that are involved with Student Impact. And I remember when Lillian explained this to me, and I understood it for the first time. She said, Dave, there's really only one thing you need to do. You just need to receive him into your life. I said, well, how do I do that? She said, you know, it's really very simple. You just need to just say, I receive Jesus Christ into my life as my Lord and Savior. I said, Lillian, you're kidding me. It's that simple? She said, yeah, actually it is. If you really place your faith and your trust in him, he's promised that he would come into your life and live in you and that he would transform you from the inside out. See, it's not a life of effort. It's not a life of trying harder. It's a life of yielding of allowing him to take control to live through you. And so I remember standing there talking to Lillian, and I, I said it probably two or three times. I said, okay, I think I'm ready to do that. I receive you, Lord Jesus, as my personal Savior and Lord. I receive you as my personal Savior and Lord. I receive you as my personal Savior and Lord. And that began for me a journey, a spiritual walk with him where he really did come into my life and began to transform me from the inside. And he wants to do that for you as well. He wants to be in your life. He wants you to have the relationship with God that you were intended to have. He wants you to fulfill the purpose for which you were created, unique all your own, but ultimately the purpose of knowing him personally. I'm going to have Aunt Tilly sing an old hymn. This is a hymn. I remember my grandmother singing this hymn in church. My grandmother sang hymns in church. She sang solos. And I remember going to church and listening to her sing solos. And this has become one of my favorite hymns, frankly, because it makes me remember my grandmother and makes me think of her. And this is kind of how I remember my grandmother singing this old hymn. It's become my favorite, Till If You Would. Softly and tenderly, Jesus is calling, calling for you and for me. See.
Well, I tell you what, I have another friend that I'm going to bring out here. Be careful here, Tilly. Oh, you be careful, honey. All right, I've got another friend here. I'm going to bring out and show up, show uh, you. And uh, let me move this case over here a little bit closer. And we're going to have just a little bit of fun to kind of close things out for the evening. And uh, let me pull him out. Here we go. All right, just take me a second. Get this glove on here. There, okay. Got it? Okay. All right, you want to say hello to everyone? Just say hi. Go ahead. Say hi. Say hi. Hi. <laughs> Tell everybody your name. Uh-uh. Oh, come on. What's your name? Vern. Vern? Yeah. All right. What kind of a bird are you, Vern? Vulture. <laughs> You're a vulture? Yeah. <laughs> Most vultures I've seen are usually black birds. You're white. Albino. <laughs> okay. Albino vulture. Mm -hmm. Most albino animals have red eyes. Contacts. <laughs> actually, vultures are you know a whole different looking bird, uh, Vern. It, it seems to me that you're you're actually a you're a, you're a cockatoo. Mm? <laughs> you're a cockatoo. I'm a vulture. <laughs> no, you're 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 a cockatoo. What are you? <laughs> well, I'm you know I'm, I'm I'm a guy. I'm a man. <laughs> Men had muscles. Oh, come on. <laughs> Men don't play with puppets. Oh, come on. <clears throat> You're a cockatoo. I'm a vulture puppet boy. Oh, come on. All right, well, how you feeling? Hungry. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. What do vultures usually eat? Road pizza. Oh, come on. I know vultures are scavengers, they, you know, roadkill and that sort of thing, but Verna, the, Vern, Vern, <laughs> are you staring at someone? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Who are you staring at? Bill. <laughs> why, why are you staring at him? Waiting. <laughs> oh, come on. Hey. What's that? The dude down here on the end, right down here, yeah, yeah, you, yeah, all the way. Over here? Yeah. This guy? Mm-hmm. What's your name? Bill. <laughs> You're kidding. <laughs> Bill, come here. You bringing Bill? Yeah, all the way, come on, all the way up here. All right, he's coming? All right. All right, why are you bringing Bill up here? Got an idea. All right. What is that? Use Bill as the dummy. Use, use Bill as the dummy? Yep. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> well, if I do that, that means I need to put you back inside the case. All right. Hang on just one second here, Bill. Just, just here we go. Oh, don't put it in here. Sorry about that. Oh, my. Sorry. Ow! What's wrong? He bit me. Vern, don't do that. Thought she was dead. <laughs> <clears throat> Who is that? Oh, that's Bill. No, he's not. Yes, it's, <laughs> his name's Bill, too. Hi, Bill. Hey, Bill. Yep. I'll bet I can tell you how old you are. Oh. Okay, Bill, stand right over here. Here's what we're going to do. I'm going to push on the back of your neck, and when I do that, I want you to open your mouth really wide so everybody can see. Okay, here we go. All right. That's good. And then when I take my finger off the back of your neck, you close your mouth. We'll try it again. Okay, great. That's good. Now, you don't need to say anything. I'll provide the words. All you have to do is just open and close your mouth. Would you like to say hello to everyone? Hi. <laughs> And, and how are you tonight? Fine. Fine. <laughs> are you having a good night? Yeah. Okay, great. You tell everybody your name? Uh-huh. All right, good. And what is your name? Tina. <laughs> <laughs> well, what are you going to do for us tonight, Tina? Sing. Oh, really? <laughs> 
You're going to sing? Yeah. Oh, very nice. Well, you know what? Actually, if we're going to have you uh, sing, I, I thought perhaps we could uh, get a couple of others uh, from the crowd to, oh, of course, they've all the kids raise their hand and all the adults look the other way. I've noticed <laughs> they're all just kind of glancing in other directions here. And uh, you know what? Uh, Molly, right back here. Come on up here, Molly. She's a student from Student Impact. And, and I have met Molly uh, with the Student Impact kids. She's a fun student. Come on up here. And um, let's see. I'm just thinking, uh, well, you know what? How, Molly, is, is, there, is there a guy in the Student Impact that might be good to, to get uh, up, up on the stage tonight as well? I think it's that guy in the yellow shirt. In the yellow shirt. Okay, very good. What is his name? Yeah. What is his name? Oh, you don't know his name. Okay, you just want to meet him. I understand, yes. Okay, Molly, I understand this. I understand this. Come, okay, come on up. Come on up here. And uh, we're going we're gonna to introduce you to him right now. Okay, let's get him up here. The fellow right here in the yellow shirt. Come on up. <laughs> That's perfect. Okay, here he comes. Come on up here. What is your name? Please don't say Bill. <laughs> what is your name? Jordan. Jordan. Nice to meet you, Jordan. Come on up here. Yes, of course. You're going to stand right here in the middle. Great. Now, actually, we're going to move you over a little bit. I'm going to put you right here on that spot. Yes, here you go. Right there. And good. Thank you. Here we go. Stand right here. Here's what we're going to do. I'm going to do a... Uh, this is a medley of Sunday school songs. These are songs that uh, I, I remember, uh, you know, singing. I did grow up in church, uh, and uh, we, we sang different Sunday school songs. And a lot of times these songs had motions to them, had words, uh, motions. And so if you, if you know the motions to the song, it's good to do the motions along with the words, not, not just, you know, not just mouth. I mean, it is good to mouth along, too. And if you know the words, don't just open and close your mouth, but you actually mouth along with, with the song. And it makes it so much more enjoyable and entertaining for everybody in the audience. Okay, we're going to have you stand right here, right there. You just be ready when I push them back. You know, oh, first of all, let's, uh, let's, let's meet you, see what sort of a voice uh, you have. Would you like to say hello to everyone? Hello. <laughs> Are you having a good night? Not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> all right, very good. Very nice. And would you like to say hello to everyone? Yup. Oh, very nice. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Strangely familiar voice there. I know that voice. Oh, here we go. You going to be all right, Molly? Okay. Okay. Here we go. Okay. Can you, can you, can you? Okay. Hang in there. All right. So you just be ready. When I push the back of your neck, that'll be your part. And go ahead and hit it, guys. To know there's gonna be a bloody, bloody Lord said to know there's gonna be a bloody, bloody Get those children out of the muddy, muddy children of the Lord Well, it rained and it poured for 40 long days, days It rained and it poured for 40 long days, days It nearly drove those and the most crazy, crazy children of the Lord And you know it, say amen. Amen. If you're happy and you know it, say amen. Amen. If you're happy and you know it, then your life will surely show it. If you're happy and you know it, say amen. Amen. I got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart. I got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart to stay. Here's the really tricky part. It goes really fast. I got the wonderful love of my voice. You know, way down in the depths of my heart. Way down in the depths of my heart. Way down in the depths of my heart. I got the wonderful love of my voice. You know, way down in the depths of my heart. Way down in the depths of my heart. To stay. <laughs> I'm in the Lord's army. 
fountain flowing deep and wide. Okay, very good. Let's try it again. Deep and wide, deep and wide. There's a fountain flowing deep and wide. Very good. Thank you. Thank you very much. 